Good morning, millennials. Happy Welcome back Friday. <laughs> Welcome back to the Morning Toast. Happy Friday. Just like in the words of our inspirational icon, Rebecca Black, it's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. I'm Everybody's really looking-, looking forward to going home to New York, New York. Everybody's looking forward to coming to my show in San Diego tomorrow night. San Diego, a go. Tickets available at girlwithnojob.com. Friday, I'm hitting up the Balboa Theater in San Diego. Sunday, two shows at the Regency Ballroom in San Francisco. Can't wait to see everyone there. Also, if you're watching this episode, it means that all my... Also, if you're watching this episode, it means that the six shows I added are now officially on sale. Verona, New York, Tarrytown. Verona. <laughs> Kansas City. Tarrytown. Kansas City, Ontario, Margot Wells. Ontario. Englewood. Englewood, New Jersey. A lot of shows were added that if you weren't able to come to the New York show at the beginning. Turning Stone. Turning Stone. Turn those stones, yeah. y'all. Jackie, that's Verona. Please just like let me finish this stupid fucking ad, okay? <laughs> If you weren't able to get tickets to my show in New York at the Beacon, there are now shows available in Englewood, Verona, and Tarrytown. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Pre-sale, a lot of tickets sold, but there are still some available. Of course, where are they available? Girlwithnojob.com. Yahoo! How funny that you ask. Well, today We've is our- We've officially lost our minds. <laughs> final, final day of LA week. And, you know, this town has really gotten to us. And it's mostly because, as we were saying before, like, we went so hard this week. We thirsted left, right, and center. And we tried really so hard for everything. And if only we tried this hard at home, like, I think we'd be big, big stars with big, big plans. We'd be dead. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to die. Like, I have wrinkles on my wrinkles. I am so tired. I cannot believe I have to do three shows this weekend. And I did one last week. And we did. 1700 podcast episodes 1700 this is now hour three of podcasting if you're watching on youtube like i'm not even gonna pretend like it's not about to happen but when tasha comes (laughs) it's dark out tasha's coming up soon but we also recorded it with her 30 minutes ago because the timing didn't work out so like we're just gonna be honest about it and it happened yesterday yesterday with morgan and you guys notice it's dark outside okay like we're not gonna pretend i'm done pretending la has made me an actress and i don't like it but we're about to pretend one more time because on monday we have a pod uh episode morning toast episode with lauren elizabeth that we already recorded that will be premiering on monday podcast and video it's going to be so premium and so fun we have a big big announcement we think you guys already know what it is but it's big bigger and surprising. than ever. and it's a secret project yeah special um we just didn't want to not have an episode on monday because i'm going to be traveling back from san francisco where i have two shows at the regency ballroom tickets available at girlthnojob.com so <laughs> instead you get a pre-taped episode and now we're really la podcasters and now it's time to go home now that we're like banking episodes days in advance like you know we fly by the seat of our pants on this show and that's how we like it honestly but you know what now I feel like I need to get a new business card because I am officially a podcaster like oh. I knew that I was a podcaster before this because I have a podcast but after this week like I am a podcaster no and I feel like we came to LA and like we solidified with our podcast friends like hey we are very much in the circle of, of podcasters because we hadn't been on all these podcasts before so I'm gonna head over to Vista and it Print. takes a podcast to know a podcast I'm gonna get a very high quality business card made that's because that's- that says Claudia Ash, right? Podcaster, podcaster to the stars. I think that's better. What about comedic podcaster? <laughs> that sounds so like fake. No, that sounds like a 90 year old CEO, like comedic podcaster. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Podcaster. Yeah. Everyone needs a business card. Uh, your next big opportunity might be right now. And you're going to be the idiot who doesn't have a uh, business card. You're going to be the idiot. Um, it's really easy to make a business card on Vistaprint. You can upload your own design if you're fancy like that. But if you're not and you're like me, they have tons of options when it comes to designs, different types of paper quality, um, things like you wouldn't even think of. Like, do I want like a gloss shine or a matte shine? I don't know. Vistaprint, tell me. Gloss for sure. You could pick the paper stock style and quantity that's right for you. And you can even upgrade to a unique touch like rounded corners. You'll order and receive your cards with free economy shipping. You can feel good knowing that Vistaprint uses only carefully selected inks and responsibly sourced paper stocks. Your satisfaction is 100% guaranteed or your money back they will make it right 100% in the words of Vistaprint 100% (laughs) Vistaprint wants you to be able to own the now in any situation which is why our listeners will get free shipping on all business cards any style any quantity just go to vistaprint.com enter promo code toast for free shipping on all business cards any style any quantity it's a limited time offer so make sure to own the now right now at vistaprint.com and use the promo code toast you should wow talking is so hard you should own the now because why not because why not? They, like, we own not, a, Because if not now, when? If not, Jackie, Vista Print should yeah. contact you to change their their little jingle to that. If not now, when? If not now, when? Oh. 
rise and shine. <laughs> you guys, rise and shine, motherfuckers. That's our first story of the day, but I will get to it. Wait, do you, what do you think about changing Good Morning Millennials to rise, rise and shine? I think that's great. And I think we should restart the episode. Just Ev- kidding. Everyone yeah. is like mimicking this rise and shine thing. And it's like super hard for me because like why it's so funny is because Kylie's voice is terrible. And that's just like something I can't emulate. No, but it's not even that it's terrible. It's just like it's so something happens at the end that's indescribable and that you can't replicate it's like a shift crack it's like <laughs> rise and shine yeah no, but it's like she didn't play she just was trying to wake up her daughter and like <laughs> she yeah. was like ra- like as opposed to like rise and shine no i feel like it's rise and shine like, she's that's like how- ri- <laughs> we are fucking delirious like <laughs> rise and shine also and by the way like <laughs> it's just it's one of those internet things that like and it never happens anymore because the internet is like a garbage cesspool wasteland. But it's one of those things where it makes you grateful that the internet exists. It's like, this is why the inter- internet exists. It is the most harmless fo- form of internet fun. Should we just get into the stories? Like, we basically are. Okay, okay. No, because or, we- or- <laughs> Stop laughing, Satchel. It sounds like we're drunk, but we're not. No, we're drunk. I on wish. Podcasting. Do you know that if you podcast for more than three hours, like scientifically, you will lose your mind? You will lose your mind. <laughs> Very spooky stuff. Spooky stuff. I wonder if this Podcast- episode's going to be funny for anyone who's not in this room. Podcasting is a very spooky <laughs> industry. It is. Yeah, like that's what I learned this week on this show. Also, um, the podcast studio that we're currently in is like an icebox. But is anyone else sweating? Sweating. We were so, we were so free. We sat here ten minutes ago. We're like, how are we going to do the episode? We're freezing. <laughs> really? I got fucking chub rub. I'm so sweaty. Like I could dye my bras a different color than it was five minutes ago. Okay. Thank you for for that tidbit. For the visual. Thank you for the visual. So we will get into the stories, but I want to bring up something that you have obviously forgotten to bring up, but it's so important because last night we went to dinner at Catch LA. <sighs> Catch La. Catch La. And something incredible happened to Claudia. And I just want you to share with the class because it, you clearly forgot. I clearly Podcasting forgot. has gone to your brain. Podcasting has gone to my brain. Um, we were leaving Catch La and I got paparazzi Not only did I get paparazzi but I got tmz which I have watched TMZ. TMZ is weird because they're like a, a huge news outlet and they don't paparazzi. They video paparazzi. So they stand out there And I never knew what it looked like. They have this big camera and a huge light. And we walked out of the restaurant and the light went on. And I was like, oh, who's behind me? And they were so, by the way, so nice. Like you expect paparazzi to be like aggressive. Like the TMZ guy was so nice and so funny. And I had like a pit about what he was going to ask me. Um, And he was just like, what do you have to say about Cuba Gooding Jr. 12 new accusers? And I was like, I think it's 14. And we just spoke a little bit about like, Cuba Gooding Jr. being an assailant. Um, we talked a little bit about Instagram, Jennifer Aniston. I like, couldn't believe it. And you guys were like, get in the car when I literally could have stood on that curb talking to TNC for six more hours. I, like, know, I would have literally like, flashed my titties. You were doing so great and you have to quit while you're ahead. Agreed, agreed, Because then agreed. you will get your foot in your mouth, say something that you regret, and we just had to pull you out of this situation. And in true form, the video has not been posted anywhere. I haven't seen one picture. And then because there were a bunch of paparazzi outside, but TMZ was the only one who, like, I guess knew who I was. But then when TMZ wants you, like, then everyone else starts taking your picture because right. they're like, oh, we don't want to miss out. Like, maybe this is just like, you know, Ricky like on a bad day <laughs> and so and then I got papped like a bunch of other times and of course not p- one picture has seen the light of day but again if you work in this biz and you have those credentials keep an eye out for our girl because Please. we have to find I feel as though those pictures exist and we just haven't found them yet I have tried everything I like couldn't those sleep. Craig's pictures were thrown straight into in the, the garbage. trash memory card it was they were changing cards and just testing their flash <laughs> yeah like, right those pictures are no non-existent I do believe your TMZ like over the shoulder booty photo getting into the car exists. I almost don't want that photo to exist because I did not want to be shot from the back. This dress that I was wearing was so tight and I was wearing the tightest bra and the tightest bangs that literally my rolls had rolls. Like it was, I looked like a loaf of bread from the back. Rolls on rolls. It was rolls on rolls. It was a Rolls Royce. Okay. I was (laughs) cruising around LA in a Rolls Royce on my back. And I don't want, I actually don't want that picture to see the light of day because I look, I just know it's moosey vibes. Okay. I have a question for you. Would you rather be moosey vibes and famous or like thin and no Rolls Royce. Moosey, honestly, famous. moosey vibes and famous. And I don't even know why I act like I don't like being a moose. Like I do. <laughs> I am I represent all the meese, mooses. And I like it. I'm sorry. I like, I feel like for a, co- like a couple months, like I was like really hell bent on being skinny. Cause like I got really skinny um, in, at the end of last year. And like I look at the TBG Awards pictures and I'm like so thin. And I've definitely like don't okay. look like that anymore. There was something in the water la- that night because I look at those pictures too sometimes. And I'm like, I'm like the same weight there that I was at other mm-hmm. times. And I just don't look like that. Oh, so Something was, was happening. Lighting. Something well, was happening. Regardless, there. I like recently I like look at those pictures and like feel really sad that I don't look like that anymore. But after this trip to LA where like everyone looks the same, like I look different and maybe 
people do take my pictures because I am fat. And you know what? I think it's working like with me and my brand and I no longer want to be skinny. Okay. Moosey vibes only. <laughs> Moosey vibes only. Like I am a moose and I'm proud. And honestly, like I find other people. Are you okay? <laughs> I am a moose. <laughs> And I'm proud. The name of this episode is the one with the moosey vibes. Of course, only moosey vibes. Oh yeah, the one strictly with moosey vibes. <laughs> Justice for meese. Justice for the meese. It's so weird that it's like goose, geese, moose, meese. No, gooses, mooses, mooses. I don't know. That's like fish. I don't know. But um, before the sun comes up again, yeah, we need to get into the fast side stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And before I do, I have to let everyone know that today's episode is brought to you by Etitude, the best and only sheets you need. After sleeping in hotel sheets for almost a week, I cannot wait to get home to my dog hair filled attitude sheets because it really makes a huge difference in in how you sleep. And the most important part is the cooling factor because these thick like I don't even know what they're made of hotel sheets. I have not stopped sweating. The back of my neck, my hairs are so curly because I'm sweating in my sleep. So attitude sheets are the best sheets you'll ever need and the only ones you'll ever need. Their comfort is feathery soft. When I get into my bed, it's like I could fall asleep so much faster just because of my sheets. But really, it's the cooling factor. They have organic, clean bamboo, and it's extremely breathable fabric that regulates your temperature to improve your quality of sleep. The amount of times I've woken up in the middle of the night, like you would think I had a nightmare because I'm drenched, like my panties are wet. Like it's so crazy. And ever since Etitude, that has not happened to me anymore. And I know why you like them. It's because they're antimicrobial. They've claimed that their skin's appearance has improved after switching to Etitude. You can read the reviews and see for yourself. Your sheets are so important for like your overall skincare and of course your temperature, but just what you put on, you sleep for so long, some of us. We try to at least and like your face is rubbing up against that stuff. It's got to be the best. It's got to be attitude. People don't realize that a lot of skincare like issues come from dirty sheets and dirty towels. Mm -hmm. And And attitude is better for the environment. Their bamboo recycles, clean bamboo recycles 98% of the water that it uses. So it's the most sustainable bedding available. uh, Cotton uses a ton of pesticides and wastewater and is very harmful for the environment. And I can't imagine that stuff is good for your skin either. They're soft as silk, breathable as linen, but at the price of cotton, you're going to love them. When you support our sponsors, you support our our show. And right now, our listeners will get 20% off their sheets and free shipping. Just text toast to 64000. The only way to get 20% off your set of attitude sheets and free shipping is to text toast, T-O-A-S-T, to 64000. Again, that's toast to 64000. Message and data rates, they might apply. Unclear, but they might. They probably will. Yeah. We got that attitude. If you've ever seen Bratz Bratz movie. movie. We can't watch a Bratz movie anymore because we were watching it when we found out that our dad died. But other than that, that movie fucking slaps. Yeah. No, honestly, even when you find out your dad died. (laughs) It's so good. <laughs> like, honest, that's how good it is. Yeah, like, like I actually could still watch it without feeling triggered. You could have a traumatic experience. Yeah, and, and that's where like, we learned the um the phrase, don't get your bragas right, in, in a, a twist. twist. Oh, it's just classic stuff, you guys. And then also the best part is that the main Bratz girl, her mom is the mom from um My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Oh, then Whose husband says, my daughter marry Ian Miller. It's good stuff. And Chi-Chi's next up. No, Chi-Chi's up no, is from... No, but she's got her neck up. Okay. That's like what they... They pull their necks back for Oh, the yeah. Photo. Pull, pull my neck. Three, two. That was before phase two. That was actually uh, my Big Fat Greek Wedding too, I believe. No, no, no. I think they had neck like... You don't eat meat? The whole time. That's okay. I, I, make, I make lamb. lamb. Okay. Are you ready now for the stories? I guess. Because you better rise and shine. <laughs> our, <laughs> our first story of the day, um, Kylie Jenner has gone viral, taken the internet by Stormy Webster for waking up Stormy Webster. There are so many wonderful things coming out of this. I guess the best part is that Kylie is embracing it more than anyone mm-hmm. else. Ariana Grande wants to sample it. Kylie wants to be in the music video. It is now Kylie's Instagram bio. It is. She just posted a photo of like sweatshirts saying Raz and Sean. Oh, good. I don't know if it's real merch because... No, like, it is. The caption is shopkyliejenner.com. I know, but She's like... She's a fucking genius. The merch itself doesn't look like on brand. No, she, she posted another one. It's real. It's real. Okay. It's, it's for like sale. We're going to shop KylieJenner.com so today and then we'll go to Shop Morning Toast on Monday because we have our restock what, what, at 3 p.m. Eastern time. What's so weird about the whole um, thing is that this clip comes from her office tour, which was released two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It takes a while for someone to to pick a nugget. Yeah. I wonder who started it. Just someone fucking hilarious. Rise and shine. No, it's rise and shine. No, it's like there's a crack in her voice. In yeah. And sh- at the eye and shine. It's fucking incredible. I love and it. And I really do hope, I've he- heard some good remixes. She posted a video to her Instagram of Stormy playing a remix and it's fucking slaps. Rise I, and shine. I do hope that a real song comes out 
I would go for a collab, Ari and Kylie. Or like a Travis Scott, Kylie. Yeah. It's Travis Scott, Ari, like a real one. Kanye. Are they broken up? I think they're broken up, but they're still a family. And I don't think that there's bad blood. Me neither. So they probably still hang out all the time, but they're just like, Oh, I'm sorry. You know who needs to get involved in this Kanye. Diplo. Diplo. Kanye. Kanye Yeah, Kanye is like, I feel like he's above it, like right now in his own mind. Yeah, he is. And Diplo is really like the The viral, the DJ of the internet. Yes. And it's up to him to like make this a reality for us. If I were to remix it, it would go a little something like this. Rise and shine, rise and shine, rise and shine, rise and shine, Stormy Webster. Pew, pew. Pew pew! Da 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 da! Rise and shine, rise and shine, rise and shine. He taught me how. Oh, he taught me how to rise, to rise, to rise and shine, to rise and shine, rise and shine. Ho, 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 rise and shine. Oh, rise and shine. Oh my God, that is so funny. I didn't know where I was going with that, but I'm then, I, I'm happy with where it went. The rise and shine took you away. <laughs> I don't know how anyone's going to wake up their child ever again. <laughs> I'm now so excited to have children. Okay, because I got to call ev- Ben. We got to go pregnant. Because every day, like, you wake someone up and you say rise and shine, like, I'm just, it's going to put a smile on your face. No, and it's such like a, a popularly used term for like waking people up that it has taken over so much that like you literally cannot wake up your children and say the words rise and shine, rise and shine without actually singing it. Right, but you could say rise and shine. <laughs> <laughs> we are delirious. We truly are. Um. Anyways, I was going to say one more thing about rise and shine. Oh, people are making it their alarm clocks, which is also like a great way to rise and shine. I'm just like loving how much the Jenner Kardashian clan is like leaning into this. Like, and I don't know that it would have had such big legs. If Kylie didn't like get in on the joke immediately, like share Ariana Grande's story, wanting to be in the music video. Right, if it would have stomped around on its big feet. Yeah. <laughs> if Kylie hadn't embraced it the way yeah, that she Yeah, I don't did. know if it would have, you know, came down the stairs in its Herman Munster shoes. <laughs> Even Louis Vuitton makes mistakes. Oh my God. Honestly, old school Real Housewives of New York episodes are some of the greatest things to watch. And it actually is a real testament. I know we say this all the time and it, for some reason every conversation comes back to cancel culture. But it's like <laughs> how, how we always say like you used to live in such a different time. Um, if you watch some of the episodes of Real Housewives of New York, like they could not say half the shit when Luann like reamed out Bethany. Oh no, no. Yeah, Luann reamed out Bethany in front of Bethany Schofer because Bethany Schofer didn't refer to her as Mrs. Delaseps, but he called her Luann. Like, so rude, so classist, so elitist. Like, that shit could not, could not happen today. No, it couldn't. Okay, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> like, I don't know. Honestly, I'm, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm, like, all talked out for the week about, like, cancel culture and the times. Yeah. I think that's fair. Speaking of, though, um, my piece with Entertainment Tonight just came out. I did, like, a 12-minute interview with them, and it's honestly really good. It is good. I mean, I look so fat and my pimple showing and I have a double chin, but like Moosey vibes only. I don't yeah, care. You should just listen to it. Wait, should I make merch? That says Moosey, Moosey vibes, vibes only? only. Maybe. See how it, like it lands. Yeah. Speaking of merch, restock Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern time, shopmorningtoast.com. Everything is back at I'll it I'll see what the thick toasters think. That's like my subgroup of choice these days. I just feel like it's a safe space for me. And if they want to embrace the Moosey vibes, I think we should. Okay. Even though, like, whatever. Okay, are you ready for our next story? Because I think it's one that's going to get you riled up. And mm. it's a it's some Twitter drama continued between oh. Colton and oh. Rachel and C. I thought it was the other Twitter drama, Jamila, Jamila, Sarah, and Peo. Oh, shit. That was the story I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, Honestly, I'll I don't want to talk about you these know, people. My fifth and fi- okay, fine. I'm going to switch to Jamila, Jamila, and Sarah Sampaio because that's what I've been meaning to talk about. They are in a Twitter feud that will not end. It will not end. It's like they e- they each keep trying to get the last word, and nope, the other one's responding. And they're each being like so SJW about everything, social yeah. justice warrior. And each time I read their response, I'm like, she has a point. She has a point. Yeah, she has a point. I'm like watching a match of ping pong. Obviously, I think overwhelmingly people are on Jamila Jamil's side, I just mean, because she's always right. I, whatever Jamila Jamil says, like I believe her. I just like she's the smartest woman alive. Um, but and- I felt as though out that Sarah Sampaio like made a decent point, which is like I understand the video that Jamila Jamil shared was. Awesome. Awesome. But she 
slammed the whole modeling industry, which I'm not like here, like pro modeling industry, but like she slammed the whole modeling industry in order to like make this celebration of this video even better. And it's like, why couldn't we just celebrate the video and not slam everyone else? No, no. And her, her argument isn't necessarily flawed, basically being you don't have to, you know, put down another group of people in order to celebrate another group of people. Um, and that's like kind of where like the feminist uh, movement is like divided right now. It's like, you like can't be a feminist if you like want to be a stripper it's like no no being a feminist is like anyone can do whatever they want and stripper being a stripper is empowering like you have to accept all types of women not just women who believe what you believe so i don't think jamila jamil was necessarily right in slamming an entire group of people or an entire group of entire industry made up of mostly women but at the same time everything she was saying was completely right yeah no i don't even think it's that it's just and we do this all the time on the show so i i don't think sarah sampaio is a toaster but it's like in order to tear someone in order to build someone up, like you're, you can build them up on their own. But when you compare it to something worse, you also are tearing something down in order to build this thing up. And Jamila Jamil like prides herself on being almost perfect. Mm-hmm. And that's an imperfect thing to do. It is. But at the same time, like I just can't really get behind Sarah Sampaio, like defending um, I know Victoria's, Victoria's Secret. Secret and that's where she lost me in the argument like her beginning her first tweet wasn't completely wrong in, in her thinking. Um, but then Jamila Jamil's like, I can't even take you seriously. Like you literally represent like everything that's wrong. The company that you like love and, and represent represents everything that's wrong with this industry. And it, they're transphobic and and they refuse to evolve. And she's and then she's out here like defending like she's fucking Ed Rosick's mistress, right. you know, like no coming out and just like, in my opinion, Victoria's Secret is indefensible. Completely agreed. And that's why like she doesn't really have a leg to stand on. Yeah. But say it was a model who didn't work with Victoria's Secret for some reason or another. No, like just someone who doesn't work with Victoria's Secret. Not everyone does. Right. Would the the argument to be made wasn't wasn't that flawed, honestly. But also, like we're so in the weeds here. Like everyone, zoom out. Like rise and fucking shine, man. Like, <laughs> it's just like you guys are ar- arguing about like the tiniest minutia of like what percentage of women in the modeling industry are setting forth like negative body image standards. Standards like take a step back everyone yeah no it, it was very much like and and the the longer the tweets go like the less sense they're not even like reading each other's no, they're, responses they're arguing about like one specific point and it, we got away from just like the bigger issue and yeah. by the way the video that jamila jamil did share was awesome there should Epic. be more fashion shows like this this should be what fashion shows are like everyone a celebration on a typical fashion show everyone like does look miserable and be I, you know, I'm not even going to go there. They just don't look like they're having fun because you're not supposed to smile. Yeah. But like, why can't we be dancing down the runway? That's the should And be what's the so funny, actually, is that the first brand to ever really put on a fashion show where all the girls looked happy was Victoria's Secret. <laughs> right. And like, honestly, that that show was the closest to like a celebration of fashion. Um, but they just refused to evolve. Like, what's so great about the video that Jamila Jamil posted was that it was a celebration of fashion of different types of women with different body types, different skin tones. And that's really uh, was fun, fun to watch. And that's a kind of feel like what Victoria's Secret was meant to do in the beginning. Like it wasn't a serious fashion show. It was colorful. It was bright. They had live performers and and they did start to have models of different skin tones, but they never evolved past that. Like they thought they were doing the right thing for having 50 white girls and like two black girls. Yeah, that ain't it. That ain't it, sis. Um, And another critic might have called it a celebration of humanity. Oh, what's that from? Greatest Showman. Yeah. The Greatest Showman. Ever heard of it? Snitch is here on the mic. She doesn't have a camera today because I don't know if you know, but she has a sty and she can't stop talking about it. And everyone's yelling at me. Why are she's we wearing two pairs of glasses? Oh, do you want me to show them my look? I think you should come show us your look. Okay. Here, come sit. We can share a microphone. She is six eye today. <laughs> this is her look. Snitch on the toast. Hey guys, welcome back to my vlog. Um, <sighs> this is my look today. Snitch Chamberlain. So I have contacts and I need to be able to see, but apparently, actually I just looked it up because we're going to dinner later and I want to know if I could be a little bit prettier and I can wear contacts if absolutely necessary. So I will. So I have these glasses for sight and then I have these so I don't offend you guys with the style on my eye. You and look glam. You look like Snitch Chamberlain. <sighs> we went to Phil's. We went to Phil's coffee. You didn't tell them yet. You didn't tell them. Okay, well, this is my look, and now I'm just addicted to the fame, and I don't want to leave. I know you can't see it. Why don't you stay here? I know you can't see it either, but underneath Margot's outfit, she is wearing her Fabletics. Oh, I am. Snitch loves Fabletics, and I like Fabletics, even though I don't work out, but I like to pretend like I'm going to work out, and that's why I wear Fabletics. I only know about it, obviously, because I've seen their commercials, but also because Snitch influenced me. Honestly, they're literally the greatest brand like ever. I don't know what I did before Fabletics. Everyone knows they were co-founded by actress Kate Hudson. So honestly, if it's good enough for Kate Hudson, it's like probably good enough for me. Um, And the whole message behind the brand is stylish gym wear that is priced affordably. And Fabletics is always coming to the rescue because all these sets being sold these days for like $400. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work for me like at all. 
Margaret, what's your favorite uh, item from Fabletics? Oh, their biker shorts are so great because they have pockets. So if like I'm working out and I want to put like my AirPods in the pocket, I will. So all you got to do is take a super quick 60 second style quiz and you'll receive a personalized showroom of pieces specifically catered towards your own unique style. This takes the guesswork out of what styles are best suitable for you. With just a few clicks, Fabletics is doing all the homework for you. And right now, our audience can get two leggings for only $24. It's a $99 value, but as a VIP, you can use your use a special link and discover your personal favorite type of leggings <laughs> from Fabletics. Um, I love a tight uh, pair of leggings that goes literally up to my Breasts. belly button. Like, yeah. yeah, no, it can't go high enough. I want it to go up to my chin. Mm-hmm. I'm loving my Fabletics. I needed cuter workout clothes, um, and Fabletics is everything, and I'm so excited about this sponsorship. So that link is fabletics.com slash toast. It's really worth to become a VIP. If you're anxious to get in shape and feel confident stepping into your workout routines with trendy and affordable gym wear, or if you just want to wear gym wear around town because it makes you feel cool, that's me. I highly recommend checking out Fabletics, and trust us, you do not want to miss out on their very special offer of two leggings for only $24, which is a $99 value when you sign up for a VIP, be sure to check out our favorite leggings, which are the ones with the pocket that literally go up all the way to my titties and get them all there in stock. Um, designs change monthly, so make sure to shop. Keep checking in. All you have to do is go to fabletics.com slash toast to take advantage of this deal. That's fabletics.com slash toast to get two leggings for only $24. That's fabletics.com slash toast. The best part is that there are no commitments to purchase monthly and free shipping on all orders over $49. Make sure you enter your email address to take the style quiz as you'll receive exclusive discounts and the inside scoop about new collections that haven't been released yet. Go to fabletics.com slash toast Again, that's fabletics.com slash toast. Terms and conditions apply. Sign on, get snatched. Yes. Are you ready for our next story? I'm excited to get everyone's take. And I'm excited that the snatcher's here. Oh, I was going to say, do you want me to leave? No, no, no. I'm excited that you're here because I want to get your take. Noah Centennial and Alexis oh. Ren are Instagram official after romance rumors. Honestly, usually when this happens, I'm like so jealous. I'm like, no one deserves Noah Centennial but me. But like he shaved his hair and I no longer feel that way about him. So honestly, she can have him. She can have him. I just read in this article that they're both 22. So I guess like that makes sense. She, he's the internet's boyfriend and she like got famous as someone's girl, as being like a girlfriend and like right. an Instagrammy couple. Jay, remember her and Jay? They were like so. Jay Alvarez. Yeah, they like made up like Instagram couples. Like they walked so like Helen Owen and her boyfriend from The Bachelor could thrive. No, Savannah and Jared, <laughs> oh Alexis Ren and Jay Alvarez. Savannah walked. and Jared walked. I heard Who's Savannah, Savannah and Jared? <gasps> the Tumblr yeah, couple. You know who they are. I LeBron? Heard, yeah. No, 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 no. Oh my God. This, this was okay. from years ago. Savannah, they were a Tumblr couple. They were obviously goals, inspo, whatever. And I'm pretty, I don't know where they are now. They're definitely not together. Sav Montano, she has um a uh, swimwear line and she's like dating some random, she always has a new boyfriend and she literally is Alexis Ren. I think that they're the same person. They look exactly like. Interessant. I could have seen her with Noah Centennial. She was also on Dancing with the Stars, Alexis Ren. So honestly, there's hope for you, Jax. There she, is. interesting factoid. She was partners with Hannah Brown's partner, Alan Burstyn, and they dated from oh. the show or like they pretended like they did, but yeah. they like their packages was them like kissing and stuff. What? Whoa. Yeah. That is crazy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Margot, do you feel like of all the couples like who have fake dated, like Nikki Bella's totally real, right? Big time because it happened after the show. If it happens after the show, it's real. Who who has pretended besides Alexis Ren? That's the only one that I know of. I'm a new Dancing with the Stars stand, so yeah. I'm not I don't have an encyclopedia of knowledge, mm-hmm. but as far as I know, I guess them. And I mean, the realest couple of them all, Robert and Kim. Oh, true. They they took that fake relationship so far. They even got married. Yeah. And they're they still married. Yeah. yeah. She got she got Twins. pregnant. Mm-hmm. That was cute. Really cute. They're like one of those couples who like I find cute, but I like don't really like like to forget how they met. It's like a Brittany Aldean thing. It's like they're cute now, but like, let's me not forget. He left his wife of like a million years for her. Um, you know? They were on a break. Who? Robert and his wife. They were separated. He was really depressed. Kim came into his life and turned things around. Well, that's Robert's side of the story. I'm sure Sharon or whatever her name is. I'm sure Sharon and her divorce settlement are fine. No, I'm sure they're fine. I'm just saying like with successful men, it's like I always love how certain men have the same wife as when they got successful as as they did when they when they first started because it shows like money didn't change them. And it's like Robert Herjavec, I think it did change him. He was in my soul cycle class this week. Oh, what was was he good? I don't know. I saw him after the fact. He was oh. super sweaty, so he must have been. Snitch Herjavec? Oh, yeah. Snitch Herjavec. She's a big, she's a big star. <laughs> Huge. Okay, I'm worried that like us sharing a mic yeah, is and affecting. By the way, it's hot. It's hot under these studio lights. I so. am so hot. And that was it from Snitch Chamberlain Herjavec. 
Are you okay? Oh my God. Oh my God. Glasses. Oh my God. Okay. You guys, we're losing our minds. We have to keep going. We're going to power through. <laughs> Next story in some streaming wars news, AMC Theaters is launching a streaming service in the latest blow to Netflix. Okay. I heard. And when I first heard it, I'm like, damn, that's a good idea. They're going to have movies in theaters at home, but it's not that. Oh, it's not? I don't think I so. I thought that it was. I don't think so. It will allow members of its loyalty program to rent or buy films and watch them at home. The first such offering from a cinema operator. That is what it is. No, but it doesn't say movies that are in theaters, just any movie. It's like a it's like a blockbuster digital. Excuse me, sir? Yeah. Oh my God. And by the way. So this is not even affecting the streaming wars. This is the loseriest <laughs> idea ever. Totally. Also, didn't Fandango now allow you to rent movies that were in theaters and watch them at home? There are That's how I watched Bohemian Rhapsody. And then I told someone that and then they were like, that can't be true. And they went to check it and it wasn't true. No, there's like a few apps like voodoo like random movie apps that you can watch in theater movies online and it's it's there's no one platform that's like oh if i want to go see a movie in the theaters but watch it at home i'm gonna go to this place that doesn't exist and i thought that this that's what this was going to be and that would have been like a real missed opportunity but i guess then amc would be then putting themselves out of business i guess so honestly if i had known that that isn't what this was then i wouldn't have chosen it as a story like just like here's some streaming war news from like the biggest loser you know like here's some streaming wars new from the new platform that's not going to affect the streaming wars whatsoever right like the streaming wars are popping like we got netflix hulu the ogs we got hbo max disney plus is coming so soon they they released the titles it's literally every disney movie ever released in theaters in the last 100 years literally from the 1900s any disney channel original movie any disney channel remake so it's like i fucking herbie fully loaded that's what i was gonna say that's all I was gonna say. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say Herbie Fully Loaded. And apparently Herbie Fully Loaded comes from like a long line of Herbie movies because when they were announcing, they when they announced all the titles, they went chronologically. So there was like a Herbie movie from the 1950s. And I was like, is how old is Lindsay Lohan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a fan of La Lou Fully Loaded, but that's just me. La Lou Fully Loaded? Oh, oh La yeah. Lou. Oh, they well, won't get that joke until okay, Friday. until Monday. Just come back to it. Um, but obviously all the decoms, like I was so shook. I cannot believe. And they released all the titles in such an interesting way. They did it all on Twitter. I know. Pretty cool, but like biggest thread ever. Ever. They had to did you, I guess there's a max to how many times you could reply to a thread. It's 150 because they had to make like four different threads. Well, whatever they the, need to the do. The color of friendship. Oh my God, whatever they need to do to get us the premium content, like I could not be more excited. Tuck everlasting. Oh my God, and we were just Ask, talking. Ask, believe, receive. You put it out there. It comes back to you. Incredible, Victor Garber. See you in mid-November on Disney+. Plus. Oh my God, What's do you know good? what else is going to be on there? Account? Do you know what else is going to be on there? Um, Rise and shine. <laughs> oh my God, like just the song of the century. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's going to be huge for Disney Max. I think so too. Disney Plus? Uh, Disney Plus. I can't keep all the HBO names. HBO Max. HBO Max, Disney Plus. Apple Plus? Apple Watch? Oh, no. Apple Sauce? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple Sauce. Oh, no, no. Actually, I think it's Apple Pie. Ooh, Morning Show is coming on Apple, Apple Pie, Pie as is the new Snitch Momoa show. See. Also, update from the last time that we spoke about Jennifer Aniston's Instagram. We spoke about it the night before the episode came out and she was at four and a half. And we're like, oh, she'll probably be at five. As of today, she's at 11 million followers. She I broke the world record. It. She beat the Royals. When the Royals joined Instagram, they had reached that record, whatever it is. And now it's Jennifer Aniston. Like, who would have thought? Not me. Definitely not not me. I would have lost that bet. Okay, are you ready for our fifth and final story? It is a little bit of biz Biz news news. to round out the week. We haven't hit you with some biz news because obviously we're so LA, like we're so vapid and we've only been caring about celebrities. But I have some hard-hitting biz news that I think is pertinent to the motherfucking situation. That's the situation as well. Are you ready for it? Yeah. You don't look ready. I'm ready. Okay. Female CFOs brought in $1.8 trillion more than their male peers. Wow. So female CEOs are killing the game. You know, people's... Are you okay? (laughs) Is your hand broken? Like, I just... Let me keep going because... (laughs) If you stop, I I won't be able to continue. Female CEOs are out earning their male counterparts. People say it's because, you know, the bar is higher for them. They have more to prove. Expectations are higher. And they're just crushing it. Look love, at these two hear this. female CEOs. Yeah, because people love to say, like, we would have a female CEO, but they underperform. That Com- is no longer a valid reason. Companies looking for a better financial return should consider a female chief financial officer. And luckily, I'm available. <laughs> Within the first 24 months of appointing female CFOs, companies saw, on average, a 6% increase in profits wow. and an 8% better stock return compared to performance under male predecessors. These women brought in $1.8 trillion of additional cumulative profits, according to a study by S&P Global Market Intelligence. The researchers looked at 6,000 companies on the Russell 3000 over the last 17 years. Damn, what the fuck is the Russell 3000? (laughs) 
Is Russell's daughter a toaster? Russell, what's good? <laughs> Russell, what's good? This is just like more proof that we needed, you know? Like, mm. I feel like a lot of times companies love to like lie and be like, you know, we had a woman, but like, it's like they always put women CEOs in position. Oh, that's what I learned from Younger. Remember they're bringing, the, yes. they're bringing on that uh, j- that writer who wrote a book about how uh, women in like high power positions, the statistics say that they underperform, but it's really because they only give them the job when like the company's in the shitter. And then they're like, we need a big change. How about a woman? And, and then it's like, like she the inherits. woman inherits a shit of a company. Yes. Oh my God. That's so funny that we learned that from Younger. But mm-hmm. now this is further, this is just more proof that it's like, if a man can do it, a woman can do it, and she probably could do it better. And she's probably could do better. It better. And we're doing it better here on the morning toast. Um, speaking of doing things better, before we bring out Tasha, I must talk about our new sponsor. Seriously, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Embark. No, it's the best thing ever. We must talk about it before we bring out Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> before we bring out Tasha. Also, I just realized the word embark. Um, it's a genius name for the company because it's bark. It's a do- it's for dogs. This company might be my favorite company ever like it's one of those things where it's like I can't I mean I I thought of this in my own mind please tell them what it is Claude because I can't sit on this company any longer it's a DNA kit for your dog so I got one last week I had to put the q-tip in the bottom uh like pouch of Theo's cheek he literally tried to eat the q-tip it was so hard I'm like you fucker you just take this q-tip for like 30 seconds it actually wasn't that hard and you put it in the tube it's just like any other DNA kit test but it's for your dog and then you can come back and get a ton of information about their breed um obviously like health stuff which is like less interesting but still very important mm-hmm. um but it's like I'm waiting to see if Theo is a descendant of Royals because I believe that he is but if you no, adopted I mean, your dog you or like you haven't gotten your results yet but I can tell you 100% like he just took a DNA test and he is 100% Russian <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like we already know where he comes from. But you so know what? If you exciting. if you adopt a dog or if your dog's a stray and you don't know what type of breed he is, like this is how you find it out. It's like sometimes I'll, I'll so interesting. I'll ask someone. They're like, well, I'm like, what kind of dog is it? Like we don't know. We adopted him, and like and there's just no paperwork on it. So this is like kind of genius. Knowledge is power, you guys. The Embark D- Dog DNA test test kit is the most comprehensive kit on the market looking at over 250 breeds and 170 genetic health conditions to help you best care for your dog. Embark is the only research grade dog DNA test test kit on the market they analyze 100 times more genetic information than any other dna test on the market this means that their scientists look at 200,000 genetic makers and can scientific discoveries that can help all of our dogs have longer healthier lives like if i get it back and it doesn't say that the is perfect like i don't know what i'm gonna do i mean it will say that and that he's like a russian doctor it is the best in class dog dna test it's the number one highest rated by customers i so far i'm waiting for my results but so far it's been a breeze oh and they pay for the shipping on the box back because like if something doesn't have a prepaid label like i can't i cannot be involved um, it's developed by PhDs and veterinarians for your dog and they know your dog's breed um, to learn how to best care for your pup. So if you have a dog and like certain breeds are disposed to like different types of like Theo's a King Charles Cavalier and they're predisposed to heart conditions. Like if I didn't know that he was a Cavalier, like I wouldn't be able to feed him properly or like his, he has to eat a specific type of food. It's just really important and not enough people know about it. They have an exclusive holiday offer because it's a great gift for like a psycho dog mom. Um, you can't get it anywhere else. So go to EmbarkVet.com. Now, use the promo code TOAST to save 15% off your dog DNA tis- test kit. <laughs> Visit, it's hard to say, dog DNA test <laughs> kit. Embarkvet.com, promo code TOAST, that's E M B A R K V E T dot com, promo code TOAST. Um, it's really premium, and I really feel like everyone's going to be excited about it. He just took a DNA test. Turns, turns out he's 100% Russian, <laughs> even when he's fleeing countries. Yeah, he's, he's got, got heart problems. That's a human. That's the puppy in him. Bling, bling. Then he solves them. That's the doctor in him. Cause I had a bad bitch. Not the middle. Helped you with your medicine. Just a little. He's coming. <laughs> Oh he tried to hold him down but, but they're, they're holding him back and that's the sound of him not barking you back of him hey. not barking you back i have literally sweat in every crevice of my vagina like i've got to go home we're gonna bring out Tasha. yeah she's right over there <laughs> we're gonna bring her out we're gonna sit down talk about jpj reminder that there is a merch restock monday at 3 p.m eastern time in addition to an episode being dropped with the queen lauren elizabeth where we are announcing something super exciting i am hitting up san diego tonight uh tickets available about girl with no job.com and san francisco and the six new shows that i released are now officially on sale tickets available at girl with no job dot motherfucking com we love you guys thank you for bearing with us this week and through this episode i hope you think it's as funny as we do sitting here we've loved la we've loved la week now it's time to get the fuck home we will see you in new york on tuesday but before that we will see you here again on monday love you all very much follow me on instagram oh, jackie, jackie let the episode end please i'm so sweaty bye
We are back. We are honored, humbled, and blessed to be sitting down with the Bachelorette in Paradise herself. Yes. I know Nicole thought she was the Bachelorette in Paradise. <laughs> she was not. But it was actually Tasha Adams. I'm so Bye. excited that you're here. I can't believe you haven't been on the show before just because like we talk about you all the time. It's like you're basically here with us. I feel like I know you guys. We know you. We you do. know us. I'm so happy that you're here. I just, this is an honor. Thank you for coming. No, this is an honor for me. Woo! Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so obviously we just need to make sure like everything's cool with you and JPJ before we get started because we like ship you two so hard. Yeah. The couple we didn't good. know we needed. You guys, we're just dating. Good. Love we're it. Living life. Did you see Reality Steve posted a like spoiler that you two had actually broken up? You know what? Reality Steve, I'm so done with him. Yeah. And you know what? He's like annoying, but he's usually right, but he was totally wrong. Which I love. Yeah. Like, I love that He's telling me what I'm doing so yeah. I can tell you you're in a wrong. You're like, you're wrong. It was so weird. It's not right. Yeah. But you guys are cool. Is he moving to LA? He is. So we're yeah, on the that's the word on the street. Yeah, he'll be here uh, pretty soon. Oh my that's gosh. Exciting. No I, pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> but it's all good stuff. It's hard to maintain a relationship, East Coast, West Coast, different time zones. I mean, we literally live on FaceTime. Right. And that's so, no way to live. It's not. I, I've seen him a select few of times since we started dating. So it's just, we're just figuring it out. Yeah. I know we're going to get a lot of questions um, once this episode airs about where your shirt's from. Okay. Because it's so cute. Can you tell everyone where it's from? Thanks. It's from this little boutique. Um, called Shop Love Lola. Okay. It's um in Costa Mesa. Okay. On 17th Street. Definitely get it. It's like 50 bucks. It's so cute. Thank you. You look great. You're just shining. Like, <laughs> I yes. can't stop. You are glowing. Like, you sprung onto the scene from Colton season. And f- just from the get-go, like, we- everyone knew you were special, you know? Oh. Yeah. And then you really shined on that season, even though there was just, like, not a lot going on for you to shine in. Right. And I'm so glad you made it out of there alive <laughs> because then you got to shine on Paradise. And Paradise, for me, seems like the hardest, worst thing to do. Like, sweating oh on camera, gosh. trying to fall in love. First of all, I love heat. Didn't sweat. Oh, really? No, you really I was thrived. I, I love heat. For a lot of people, by, like, week three, like, the skin is bad and, like, the hair is bad. <laughs> But you looked really great the whole time. Yeah. The bathing suits were fresh. Thank you. Yeah. I will say my skin freaked out a ton on Paradise. Did it, it didn't know it was it didn't pick it up. It was the worst. Really? Oh, I've never I literally thought I was a teenager again. Well, because it's a lot of makeup all day. All day, every day. Yeah. And then it's hot. And then it's just like I'm literally sleeping outside. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my pillows are like wet from humidity. Ew. <laughs> so it's just like <laughs> when you got home, what was like the first thing you did back in civilization? Um I threw everything in the wash. Yeah. I threw away all my makeup and all that kind of stuff. What else did I do? Took a shower. I so. yeah, and then I made myself a margarita because yeah. I was then addicted to tea. Because then you so. missed it. You missed it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Talk about the whole drinking on Paradise. Did you wake up every day and have a drink? What time did you have a drink? It's like no. you're tempted to be, you know, so drunk because there's open bar and it's there all the time. But then at some point, I'm sure it gets like old and you don't even want to drink anymore. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't wake up and have a drink. In fact. We had the best cooks. Like I had a green juice almost every morning. Wow. Yeah, you can make anything you want. Nice. So I had a green juice, had an omelet. Um, what did I do? I would probably start drinking in the afternoon. Yeah. Who was always the first person to like get the start drink the started? Um, I think I was one of the <laughs> Just comes out. You're like, I don't really drink. Green juice for me. Who's ready for a margarita? <laughs> right, right, right. That is so funny. And how was Wells as a bartender? He was actually great. Heavy pour? Um, he could have done a little better. Oh, really? Yeah. That's hilarious. We were always just trying to hit his hand, just like <laughs> right. a little more. Yeah. yeah, he has to abide by all the rules and regulations. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so many people came and went, Bachelor in Paradise. You were first on the beach, mm-hmm. and you pretty much made it to the last episode, right? Or second to last episode? Yeah. I was. I think I was like f- the fifth girl. But right. yes, I made it to right before engagements. And yeah. so, how long is that actually in real person time? Um, It's a couple of weeks. It's like... Three weeks or so. Does it feel longer? I literally thought I was there for three and a half months, it's four time. months. It right. was way longer than Bachelor. Yeah. yeah. It was the most insane thing I've ever done. No phones. No phones. No which I'm kind of used to. I could not wait to get my phone. Right. But um, like, was there anything news going on where like you just didn't even know like there was like a hurricane or something? Like how would you have, you know what I mean? Like being that yeah. off from civilization is actually kind of scary. It, it is. In fact, when I was on The Bachelor, that's when like the fires were all happening over here oh. in um, LA. Yeah. So I kind of like know like being disconnected on the show and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on at home? That's right. so crazy. But no, nothing went. Nothing crazy. No, no. Nothing was going on. Just everything crazy going on on the beach. Oh my gosh. Too much to handle. You were caught up in many 
a, a true love Many triangle. Many a romance. Yeah. Here at the Morning Toast, like we did think that you and Derek were Endgame, and we obviously did. we were really? wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I just assumed you guys like were engaged right now, <laughs> and I don't know where I got. That and by the way, she told us that, so I was just like watching it through the lens of being like, okay, obviously Tasha and Derek end up together, <laughs> and then it's like he's going home, and I'm like, how are they going to end up together? Like, <laughs> it just wasn't like, adding up. You come on the so show saying still- you're dating JBJ, and it's like, but, but so you were supposed to be engaged. Those- when are you? Derek's gonna- still in the back, right? right. <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't that upset because like I feel like at the end of all this, like me and Derek are actually the most compatible. Um, <laughs> yeah, so fine. I'm okay with it. And I'm actually really happy for you and JPJ. Like, I think it's going to be good for you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can you talk about living the experience and then watching it on TV? Like, I'm sure everyone is making comments like, oh, you should have done this or you should have said this or you should have gotten more involved or you should have gotten less involved. Yeah. How do you deal with like having to have a million people watch like your very personal intimate relationships being growing? It's kind of hard just because you don't see everything. And I know everyone says this time and time again. You see like four hours worth of a 24-hour day. Yeah. But like it's true. Like so much goes on. Like you see a select conversation. Like even when we were, um, I don't know, making fun of like Angela's walk. Literally everybody was doing that. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it, it, the, and it was just like a looked, thing. And, and But it, it looked look really like bad. Bully. It made me look like I was just trying to like rag on her and be like some mean girl. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. And that walk That's a was great very example. interesting. Also, there's no TV. There's no music. There's no book. Like, what do you think I'm going to do? Of course, right. I'm going to make fun of y'all. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> make fun of me. Like, I make fun of myself all the time. Yeah. No, yeah. that's a fair assessment. There's you know, not much like, to do. Get over it. Yeah. Um, and the wedding seemed like the greatest thing ever because you guys finally got to leave. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. We're like civilization. Yeah, like people. other people. <laughs> did you know you would be going to a wedding? Like, did no. they tell you to pack a dress? Because they should have. They did tell us to bring like you always just know to bring like a formal option. Right. Okay. Even like for a rose ceremony, you could do a rose exactly. ceremony dress to a wedding. Exactly. Which mine was a rose ceremony dress. So it's like, I, I felt so underdressed. I should have Did worn you? the dress that I wore to the previous rose ceremony to the wedding. Like but you had if just I worn knew. It. Yeah. Yeah. Like then, they should give people a warning. Otherwise, like Chris and Crystal, it's like people are coming in, in beach their, dresses. Yeah. In a yeah. maxi dress. I literally had a beach maxi dress. <laughs> Were you part of the group that got to go into the wedding? Yeah. Okay. As a viewer, I have to tell you how fucking awkward that was to watch. Like, it was losers. incredible. It was incredible. It was like, it was literally like high school, like the cool people, the plastics and the losers, like only the cool people got to go. And it was probably sucked because like it was, it looked like so much fun. Like it would have been fun regardless, but coming from the fucking house, just deserted island that you've been oh, living yeah. on for two weeks. Like it was probably so fun, like even more heightened fun because you're like dance, music, civilization. It, like, honestly. So when you got back, was it like so fucking awkward? Did well, you feel bad? Everyone was sleeping. Okay. And we had like our shoes were off because we just got finished right. partying. And we we're like, oh, okay. Well, I guess <laughs> we'll go to bed now. Right. Uh, and yeah. When, when you see all the losers like sitting by the bar, like it's <laughs> it's no. so sad. Yeah. Everyone's like, so how was the party? Like the next day, we're just like, <laughs> it was fine. That was such <laughs> an interesting was dynamic that we hadn't had before. And I so appreciated it. And then the wedding content like made for so many good storylines and then having people come down I loved at it. the wedding. It added a new layer that I was loving. I had no idea all those people were going to be there. First of all, it was really weird walking to like a wedding reception where like you knew of everyone, but you don't know. So right. did you introduce yourself to like other Bachelor Nation people who like you know and they know, but you oh, never actually met? Of course. Of course, of course. Like my favorite was probably, well, I met a lot of people, but I love Raven. And, love Raven. You know, and, and Adam. And it was just so funny because like Raven comes up to me and like Adam's like hiding behind her. She's like, I just have to tell you like Adam's like your biggest fan. Oh, he loves you. And he's like cute. blushing in the back. And it was just so cute. They're so sweet. You guys, they're the cutest thing. Yeah. They really are. Nicole put it best. It's really like a class reunion. Yeah. People from different grades who like you know of because you saw them in the hallways, but you didn't really get That's to know. That's actually a really good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Can I get your take on something? Speaking of Nicole. Um, <laughs> everyone. Um, you two are close. Yeah. Yes. So if you could just like relay a message to her. Um, <laughs> oh God. You know what it is? It's like, I actually really respect her because she did a lot of really cringy things. Start and like in her defense, in her defense, like she was there for a while, a lot of heightened emotions and like she was being crazy, saying crazy things, like calling herself the bachelor in paradise. Right. And like forcing, <laughs> forcing these two guys to get into a fight over her and then being like, why are you fighting? <laughs> you literally like, forced that. I want an aggressive guy. You're so aggressive. Play, play, <laughs> be aggressive. Why would you do that? Like she was just like a little all over the place and she got a lot of like, tweets like making fun of her and she really took it in stride and it's very hard to like make fun of yourself and like right. not and like laugh with everyone instead of having them laugh at you so for that I really respect her but she is now continuing all this drama it's like this was months ago get over it girlfriend like right. Clay didn't want to get engaged which is like you and JPJ didn't get engaged it's not that crazy like it's people not. who do get engaged they they know that it's right and like look at Chris and Crystal like it really can work out but it's not that crazy but for also someone to at, not want to get engaged after three weeks look at Raven True. and Adam you know you don't have to get engaged but you can wind up engaged so right. it wasn't so crazy 
I think what the problem is, is that they actually had like a much bigger storyline while we were there than what what was shown. Okay. So okay. I think there's just like a lot more history that like took place. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. Clay and Nicole were the cutest things I've ever seen. Really? Like the cutest thing. And all the doubts that like were sprinkled in in little testimonials on, on Clay's part weren't present on the beach they weren't and that it, you saw me call him out yeah it's because i saw it and he wasn't being like truthful. truthful and so i was just and i just like i don't mean to be like a little investigator but like when it comes to like my girlfriends like yeah. i got you yeah. and also i have like some pretty good relationship history yeah so i kind of like i don't know red flags kind of trigger me yeah yeah and you're you're willing to just say it yeah say it like I'll it is call you out but so now there's more drama unfolding in the comment section on instagram <laughs> i saw that is nicole in a relationship no Oh, was she with someone uh, she else? Was talking to someone, but a boyfriend, no. Okay, because her Instagram captions were making it seem like she found someone who like appreciated and respected her. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying that well, he was really sweet. You know, it was really sweet. Yeah. Um, but so I just <laughs> do you feel like at some point it's like enough of Le of like 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 she should like let it die. Yeah. yeah, like things take time. And then Clay made a funny joke, and yes, he reignited the fire. But I thought it was funny. What things was take time, except engagements in paradise, because <laughs> it was and it was on yeah. JPJ's picture. I know, I know, I know. Nicole's like, can you just have JPJ like burn that photo down? Right, now? Like, delete, delete <laughs> the like, comment. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's like dead and gone. It should yeah. just kind of. We should all just kind of move on. We got a lot of questions about how you refer to JPJ. Like, what do you call him now that you guys are like? intimate like do you call him jpj you call him john you call him john paul call, jones i call him john john when i want i feel like fun and like flirty i'll go jpj yeah yeah you know but it's john and it's so funny because like when i was interviewing like while being on paradise i'd be like yeah so john told me that's like who's john i'm like john paul jones oh my god that's so funny if you said john i wouldn't know who you were talking about that's so yeah. funny like yeah that's weird to me but yes he's john what did you do before you went on the bachelor what was your career I was a phlebotomist. Oh, what's that? It's like jaw blood. <gasps> oh my God. Yes. That is so scary. Like, did you see the movie, the documentary about um, Theranos? Yes. As a phlebotomist, oh. how did you feel about wait, that? Wait, wait, wait. But I, I, I've heard of it. I'd never watched what it. What was it about? Oh my she God. creeped it was me this out. Honestly. Woman, she was the Billy McFarland of the medical industry. And she like this. And she had this <laughs> whole big plan that like huge investors got behind where she would get a prick of blood, just the smallest sampling, like a bloop, and you could test for, you put it in her little Theranos machine and it tests for every single disease under the sun. And as a phlebotomist, you would know that that's impossible. Impossible. Because you need so much blood, you need so much samples, but she was going about it and she was selling this machine to Walgreens, blah, 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 but it didn't fucking sure. work. And it was, it was like unsanitary and the Walgreens people were just drawing blood in the real way and testing it and then Could saying they were you? using Theranos. Imagine. As a phlebotomist, you should watch you it. Should watch no. it. <laughs> you know what? She like really creeps me out. Oh, yeah, that too. The Not to be rude, and the voice. But like she like really creeps me yeah, out. Yeah, like, Her yeah. eyes just kind of like bug out. And, She's like, going to be a popular um, Halloween costume oh, this year. <gasps> sure. Stop. And it's like yeah. this. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Can I, play, can I pull that off? Please. Yes. yes. <laughs> so all you need is black turtleneck. Okay. Um, and you got to talk like this. Okay. Um, so <laughs> are you planning on going back to work? Like your life has changed so much. And like, yeah. it's like this new culture that we're living in where it's like, you really don't ever need to work after being on The Bachelor or Bachelorette. <laughs> and career change. Career, it's a career shift. I mean, I guess, but like I went straight to work to my nine to five the second I got back from Bachelor. You did? Of course. Are you and still then, working a nine to five? No. I quit right before I went to Paradise. Paradise, because oh, you got to take three weeks like, off. It was like just weird. It was just like I was leaving all the time and it wasn't fair to the company. It wasn't fair to me. Like I felt so overwhelmed about not getting stuff done and I just had to like quit. Under but I was going to be a phlebotomist because I want to go to PA school. Oh. I, I'm a bio pre-med major, so that's of what I wanted to are. do. <laughs> but honestly, that was my passion. My passion now is more like in homes and architecture and like- Oh, that stuff, love so. that's so interesting. I have a there. random question for you. Are you and JPHJ going to dress up together for Halloween? You know what? We've definitely thought about it and we have some cute ideas. Do you? Yeah. You're not going to say that. But you know, oh, no. Because they're going to be really good. We tell us afterwards. Yeah. Okay. We. I need some inspiration for okay. Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Um. Can you talk about the, the the time you spent at home after you left Paradise before going to see JPJ? Like, what did you do? Like, what did you feel? What made you get on that plane? Did you have to, you know, tell producers like, "Yo, meet me at the house. I'm getting on a plane." You know, what's <laughs> yeah. the logistics? What's funny is, okay, Paradise was a lot. Um, I kind of like locked myself in my room like I usually do after being on a TV show. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's your life now. Yeah. So um, it was just quite a bit. And like all I can think about was just like John. And it was like we had a really good thing going. But we, we started midway. Yeah. So like it really wasn't. 
we didn't give enough time. Yeah. And so I was just like, what if something like good came out of it? And like, I didn't know. Yeah. But also my sister was going to school in Maryland. Uh-huh. So she was moving to go to Pensacola, Florida because she's becoming a pilot. Oh, cute. Yeah. I mean, you guys are also smart. Yeah, she's yeah. crazy though. She's like next level. <laughs> um, so I was going to go and say goodbye because she was moving. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, by the way, John lives like 30 minutes right. away. I'm like, I guess I could just go hop over. Well, Meant to be. I kind of told one of my producers that I was really close with. And I was like, you know what? I just, I think this is what I need to do. Yeah. He's like, this could be really good. And like, I'm really excited for you. Yeah. So we're going to send a camera crew. Of course, of course. <laughs> and I'm like, my ticket was already bought. Like we yeah. got it. And um, yeah, they just came with. Their thirst knows no bounds. I mean, they were only there for like probably 18 hours. Like they just facilitated facilitated me yeah. being there when he opened the door was that a genuine reaction or you had to refilm it uh that was a genuine reaction oh. but they kind of cut it out he just started laughing <laughs> <laughs> of course he did because that's just what he does when he sees me he goes ha 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 i don't like John <laughs> my reaction was like <laughs> oh my god that's so you're not funny. shocked <laughs> that is so cute yeah do you feel like the like everyone on bachelor in paradise knowing that like at the end is the engagement like it kind of affects relationships like maybe not in the best way like even with clay and nicole i feel like Mm. if the engagement was never a question like they might have had a chance to survive outside of the show but because like she was so keen on engagements and he wasn't and the fact that it was even a conversation like really might have doomed them yeah no i think that definitely had an effect like they could have just kept dating with no of that I think pressure. yeah if engagement wasn't like the main premise they would probably still be dating yeah interesting out of all the couples who got engaged which do you think is going to be the first to the altar or the only Ooh, I don't know I think Hannah and, and Dylan Me I think too. they're the cutest thing yeah. they're really out here doing it I the mean most you yeah. know I don't know I don't know I love Demi and Christian though yeah well um, I actually heard they broke up can you confirm or deny that that is true well apparently I'm not that close because I don't know <laughs> okay I, I actually <laughs> heard that they weren't together um can no. I get your temperature on Chris and Katie and uh, what were your thoughts on the incredibly weird interview and situation they had on after the final rose and I am a Katie stan like I loved her and I just don't know what happened at that last episode fell apart. it was so awful like you now when we were there filming it kind of just like all happened we had no idea that was going to happen did it you was- feel awkward yeah, a little bit in the sense of like we wanted to like help and we kind of felt like we were like in like a, like a therapy. therapy session. Yeah. And like I was just like, shoot, like don't feel that way. But like, Chris, I love you. And like right. it was just like I was very involved. Yeah. Do you think they're going to make it? I hope they do. Yeah. Yeah. I really I do like they were engaged. I was like, who's the third couple? But we oh, haven't Lord. heard about them. Like, and it's <laughs> but like no news is good news. No news is good it's news. true. But with like Dylan and Hannah, they're like traveling around the world. Like I know that they're together because I see them in a hotel room together, you know? Right. Yeah. I just am not seeing so much of the other two couples that I just, just genuinely don't know if they're still together. You know, I don't know. I think Chris for sure and Katie are together. Okay. okay. I think that for sure. I'm almost positive that Demi and Christian are not, which would be so sad and so crazy because I really enjoyed watching their journey. Oh Lord have mercy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's talk drama. Like the the show's over. Okay, who are we friends with? Who don't we like? Who mm-hmm. are who do you still keep in contact with? Where's the beef? The group chat in the middle of all the Kaylin Br- Blake, Blake drama. Text drama. I had heard the group chat uh, was not favorable. Was not favorable. Yeah. Um. Okay. So drama. I still talk to everyone for mm-hmm. the most part. Um. I don't really. There's nobody that I'm like. You didn't really have a lot of the beef. Worst. Yeah. No. You just nobody. like made one comment about Hannah G. And is that what you wanted me to say, Snatchler? But like you were just saying what everyone else was thinking. So right, I didn't think that not- was like your, you didn't mean girl her. No. no. Oh, her reaction was very dramatic. I remember that. It was just a little, a little dramatic. Much. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I didn't mean to do the most with her. Right. Being, like she thought. No, and someone yeah. had to say it. But also. They, I mean, yeah. We were all thinking of it, right? Yeah. And but no, they, I, I heard but br- someone had to say it. Your point was so true. They brought you into a situation and took up your time in those early key moments on the beach that wrapped, involved you with Blake and you missed those opportunities to make connections with other people. It's true. In the most important time. And like she knew that for you and let you go on that date. And I felt you. Well, guys did tell me they're like, yeah, after the first date, we thought you and Blake were like a thing. So we kind of like backed off. Right. right. But like, am I going to go, you know, like, come on. But I do need to commend you for how you handled that entire situation. Because Thank you. when you guys went on the date at first, I'm like, oh, no, this bitch is now getting caught up in all the drama. When like, I really feel like you're so above it. And you found out that there was something weird going on and you just washed your hands. You and excluded yourself from this narrative. One, one of which you, you never, never asked to be a part, part of. of. And Dude, you too d- much. And you just like really washed your hands of it and never looked back. And I just thought that was like so mature of you because like paradise and, and the environment kind of creates this sort of, you know, situation where you like want to get even in more and deep right. and fight. And can I talk to you for a second? And you just bounce the fuck <laughs> out. And you and Blake were never even a question. Like, and I loved that. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like, you know, he had enough on his plate and I did not ask to be involved in like the spiderweb of stuff. So yeah. I was just like, 
Peace. Deuces. You did a great job. Thank you. When you got home and you were watching the episodes and everyone's tweeting, um, you were pretty like an uncontroversial figure, so I'm sure it wasn't terrible, but people always have things to say, always. usually negative. Yeah. Um, and even someone like you who was just like truly a ray Please. of sunshine on the, on the show <laughs> and really did nothing wrong and never had like a moment where you probably regret. I'm sure you still got an influx of nasty DMs, tweets. Yeah, it was more so after the whole like Angela thing. Oh, um, really? True. Yeah. What, 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 how do you People were like just that? like, Taisha, I thought so highly of of you for you to stoop down that low. I'm like, how low? Like, right. Because I went like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, if I hit Nicole's head down. Like, right. come on. They're like, putting yeah. you on a pedestal. Like, just chill for a minute. And no, then like, like they just expect everyone to be perfect. And that's so crazy. And by the way, like, you're still perfect even though you did this. Yeah. yeah I didn't do anything wrong. Right. No. And but. she did walk weird. Yeah, come on. She, yes. We, it was we aggressive. made fun of it. It, it was, was aggressive walk. It was. It was a, it was a strut. It was a lot for a wedding. I went it to was a, a lot wedding. For anyone. I went to a wedding Look. right after, and the bridesmaid was like, "I want to be like Angela walking down the aisle." <laughs> but like Angela's a sweet girl, so I don't want people to think like oh that gosh, you hate her. Hating on her. Yeah, like relax. We got so many questions about your teeth. Like why? What? They're so white. It's so funny. This girl stopped me at the airport. She's like, "Please just tell me why your teeth are white." They're perfect. <laughs> they're seemingly perfect. It's so funny. I don't. I don't. I use Sensodyne toothpaste. Same. Oh, so does Jackie. It's yeah. best. Do you have sensitive teeth? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The gums. Yes. We the also gums just exactly it. Mm -hmm. We also got like a lot of positive positive comments about your body and your breast specifically. But I'm not out here objectifying <laughs> women. But it's one to let you know, like it was all very well received, and Thank you, you should be very proud. Yeah. Thank you, you very going much. Yes. Thank you very much. I got them done when I was in high school. Did Great. you? Money well spent. Money yes. well spent. Yes. Um, my doctor's name is G O D. Got oh, <laughs> oh wait. yeah. No, I, like, I never got my boobs done. My boobs are all natural. They are oh, all what? Oh, oh so you got them in high school when you developed yeah! during puberty? Oh, I, was like, no, I was like, I was like, I was like, high school's a little young. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, what are you? No doing? judgment, no judgment. But like, and I'm like, who's Doctor John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get his number? Um, do you still talk to Derek? Derek, you know, um. We've DM'd like a time or two. I think he like made fun of me about something. But like okay, we're like we're cordial. That's good. Yeah, we're that's fine. Good. Okay. Um, when you watch back those episodes of JPJ really defending your honor, like being a little nuts, yeah. how does that make you feel? I mean, I know John had like the best intention, but I I mean, we talked about it. He was extremely apologetic oh. for the way that he acted. Right. I think it was just a little much, but like also try being on like two hours of sleep. It's and too like, much. Three like, margaritas. You know what I mean? You and just like doing this 24 hours a day, like you kind of just overreact to things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I want to ask you a few questions before we let, we let you go about Colton season. Okay. Um, and I actually don't remember this incident, but this is a question from S. Calvin. Oh. The most important question. Why did you decide to jump feet first on the bungee jumping date with Colton? <laughs> as if I made that... As a conscious decision, okay? I was blacked out. I cannot believe that you I did that. I was gone. I yeah. can't believe you did that. So you were supposed to go head first? Never. Um, I was supposed to like skydive so, like a swan. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> I just was like, <laughs> <laughs> this way? Oh my After God. I had a lesson for like 20 minutes, like right. this is what you're supposed to do. No. Do not do this. And I'm like, okay, got it. If, if, if it was an option for you to say no, would they have let you not do it? Like- has anyone ever gotten down off the bungee jump? You know, I thought that and I was like, they're going to for sure tell me to go home. But then right. their You're relationship dismissed. wouldn't have grown. If you it's guys so <laughs> true. Because like, honestly, we got down and we were just like floating. Happy to be alive. Oh yeah. my gosh. First of all, I like passed. Okay, so I passed out midair. That's why I like did you? flapped back. I was like, you don't understand. I was gone. I was not there. How did you not like fracture your spine? My dad literally lectures me about this every single day. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Tasha, do you remember that one time? I'm like, yes, dad. We just I talked remember. about it yesterday. Oh my God, that's so funny. And yeah. you mentioned on the beach that um, Colton was actually a terrible kisser. Oh. Did you hear from him at all? <laughs> no. No. No, but didn't he like tweet something? Yeah, he always takes to Twitter. <laughs> he is, and he's starting Twitter right now with Rachel Lindsay. Oh God! What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Are you, have you met Rachel? Um, I have not actually. We were just with her, and we asked her, and she said she loves you. She thinks you're great. Oh, yeah. that's sweet. I did a little bit of like a podcast with her. She's the Allie. best. I think she's really sweet. Um, yeah. and Colton is now inserting himself in some drama. I would love to know, like, have just in, having known like what the the Bachelor e ecosystem is like. Wh where do you stand? With Colton? Between Colton and Rachel. Or just um, Colton in general, like using his Twitter as a defense mechanism. I mean, I think Rachel's a straight shooter. And I think Colton does rely on Twitter to kind of like yeah, take his little jabs. Honestly, Colton's like a little a French bulldog. He's not going to like do anything. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think no, I'm maybe on Rachel's side. I don't really know. Yeah. I don't want to be on his side. 
I understand. Before we let you go, everyone wants to know what kind of bra you wear. Um, <clears throat> it's, Victor- it's just a Victoria's Secret Chapel really? bra. Mm-hmm. The one that has like a little V in the middle with like a little diamonds. Cute. Okay. Everyone yeah. wanted to know. Obviously, it's not real diamonds, but like. Oh, it's not? I think it's diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you. We loved watching oh, you. We can't wait to see you on our TV sometime soon. Like, I don't know, maybe a televised wedding. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Could you follow imagine? Tisha on Instagram at Tasha with how many A's at the end? There's three. Wow, that was very brave of you. I'm so sorry. Very well, I was it was Tasha with A for Adams, and then I don't know where the last A came from. It's for extra. Yeah, mm. you got an A on your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Thank you guys so much for watching Toast LA Week. We really hope you liked it. We will be back on Monday with an episode with Lauren Elizabeth with a very special announcement there and an update on our merch restock. Spoiler alert, it's Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> have an amazing weekend. Don't drink and drive and have a great time. Claws the law. Bye. 